Okay, in this video, I'm gonna share how I've been using cursor to turn my lovable build into WordPress theme. So I've spoken about this before. I've mentioned that you can use WordPress as a, a you can use a, a headless WordPress CMS. So you could have WordPress as your backend. You don't have to use Superbase, but you can build a React or Next.js front end, and then you can have WordPress as your backend, but you can also just make the whole thing a WordPress theme and then use plugins. So that's exactly what I've done to build my directory tool. So if we head over to um, mk.directory, this is where I've got the current uh, theme and build. So this was all designed in Cursor. This entire WordPress theme was created in Cursor. Um, everything just everything, everything that the design, the functionality, the animations, this is all uh, me instructing cursor. But we love how Lovable works. We love how Lovable works, how it designs, how, how we can easily manipulate the designs and just see it in front of us. And cursor, although it does do very well with uh, designs like general, you can give it a prompt and create a Vite and React or Next.js site really well. With WordPress themes, I don't know if maybe it's not trained on as much data for WordPress, but the themes usually leave a lot to be desired and you've got a lot of tweaking to do. So what I've been doing is redesigning this. So this is cool, but we can do better and I want I want better. And also I want this this whole the ease of color schemes and things like that. And again, Lovable is amazing with that. It's not taken that many prompts to get this. So my initial prompt, I gave it the, I just copied and pasted what I had. And I told it that I wanted to create a directory landing page that would be perfect for turning into a WordPress theme, a WordPress site. So with that, it would structure it in a way that it would be easy for cursor to pick up and convert into a theme. So that's exactly what I've done. This is where I'm at so far. It looks pretty much the same. Let me just swap between them. Yeah, it looks it looks the same. Like everything, everything I've asked it to do, except for the popular categories, because these icons are maybe Shad CN or something else. So small things that need to be done, but what I'm doing is converting it page by page. So we've got the featured businesses, uh, if we click on one of them, I'm building it out. Let me just go over to one of these ones. As you can see, the design is exactly the same. So it's been copying the files, the, everything it can see, it's been replicating that into PHP, which is absolutely, this is, this is amazing. So again, everything, this one doesn't have, does it have reviews? No, this one doesn't have reviews, but look, it's got the photos. These don't work to enlarge, but it's done everything it's doing everything in the same way that I've designed it in Lovable. So let me see if I can, which one has reviews? I need to find one with reviews. Yeah, so again, something's up with this. Uh, it's, it's treating this side as the sidebar. So small things that need to be done, but essentially it's copied the design. So this is React design and it's just being converted into PHP. And I'm just making sure that the animations and whatnot are in line. So that's something that you can do. So you don't have to do the headless CMS option. Granted, it would be much quicker to just do the headless CMS option. But again, this is for the directory plugin. So I've created Smart Directory Pro and I've built this plugin, which is what you can see. So when we click through here, this is all the plugin, the map, the about section, the AI generated content the imported reviews, all of that stuff is the plugin and then everything else that you can see is the theme. So that's what I'm doing now is just redesigning the theme and reinforcing the things that I want to in the plugin. And again, I'm just gonna go bit by bit and get it to build these features in. So one of the things that I was having issues with with the native, like the WordPress native theme that I built was that a uh, customizer was having trouble. Like everything I wanted to do, if I want to change the color scheme, I've got to go back and forth with cursor to get it to make this something that's easy to change in customizer. And then that gets finicky because 
you've got to change the background for lighter buttons and things like that. So there was quite a bit of conflict. So I decided, let me recreate the theme. Let me start in lovable and then I can design it exactly how I want it, keep it clean and then factor in this color scheme because look at this. So everything that I can do here, I'll be able to do in the WordPress theme. So that's where I'm at now. So what does this look like in cursor? How can you actually do this? The first thing that I did is I told it what I was going to be doing with it. So initially when I, I started the site, I told it that I wanted to eventually turn this into a WordPress theme. And then when I was happy with it, I reinforced it. So I said, so I'm going to be converting this theme into a WordPress theme. So I need to make sure that all of my React folders are prepared. Can you do this? And then I've said, it needs to be well-structured with modular components, header, footer, homepage, all of that stuff. And then it says, look, I already know this. That's exactly how I've built it. So there's nothing else I have to do. And then I've downloaded this file and I've given it to Cursor. So here we've got it here. Uh, all the files inside it and then I've created a conversion rules file or just the .mdc and that's just got more instruction telling it what I wanted to do the just everything that I would want it to do to convert to WordPress and this is something that you can get lovable to do you can tell it to make this file or you can go to Claude or ChatGPT and get it to make you a conversion file and then the next thing you want to do is get your local environment set up. So I should have used Docker. I usually, I use Docker the first time around and I found it, I found it easier because it could manipulate the WP admin and all of that stuff. And to be honest, cursor, it can still do it, but I shouldn't have opened the WordPress content folder only. So I'm only in the WordPress content folder, whereas with Docker, it sets up the entire virtual environment and then you've got uh, WordPress content, you've got WP admin, and then you've got access to the WP config file if you need to up the memory or do anything like that. The reason I chose to just use WP content is because I wanna focus on the theme and the plugin files. So anything that I do is, it's easy to replicate because when I package the theme and the plugin to give to people, I want them, I want to know what experience they're having and have the same experience. Whereas if it's accessing all the other folders and tweaking things that I wouldn't have access to, if I'm giving somebody the plugin or the theme, then I'm not going to know. I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to know how it would behave on somebody else's installation. So to minimize any tweaking with anything outside of the theme and the plugin I just said let me just open up the WP content folder and the result is yes I get to see how this will work for other people but also I have to now when I need to debug something I have to create a separate log and download that log analyze it give it to cursor and whatnot but yeah for the most part it's been it's been fairly simple what I would say is when you're prompting cursor to do this, have your conversion file. And then every time you start a new chat, you're going to need to tag that, that file and remind it what you're doing because it, it doesn't know. It's not just going to follow on. It will do its own thing. So every time I prompt it, I say, uh, I tag the conversion file and I'll tag this folder. So it will look something like this. Let me start a new chat. And I'm going to, it's already got it tagged. So I'm going to, so it's got the conversion file tagged. And then I'm going to say something like, um, let's continue uh, converting this build. And then I'm going to tag that. So just copy path because we can't tag the folder. Um, let's, con let's continue converting this build into a WordPress theme and I'm going to put the actual theme in brackets. So this is my theme here, copy path. And um, what was the next thing? So let's continue converting this build into a WordPress theme. Uh, let's check, let's check over what we have already replicated uh, and um, 
make sure everything is this is why I use voice to text instead is in line <laughs> with and then I've got my plugin as well so again this is why I wanted this controlled environment because I've got my theme and my plugin these are both in the WP content folder so uh, so so um, let's Let's make sure, let's make sure everything is in line with the plugin and build any missing pages. Oh, oh, ages. So let's put that over there for a second and see what else we need. Do we have the submit page? That was, that was something to submit your business. I did see it before let's go here submit your business okay so we've got this so it will replicate this page and it's done the footer already and then this the footer is, has already been set up in customizer it's, it's made it so much easier to set up the customizer the header those kind of things You've got map settings here. I'm not going to click on it because it shows the Google Maps API, but that allows the street view to show up if the business, if you've imported the longitude and latitude. So uh, that will show up there. And uh, footer settings here, we've got all of this stuff. It's just made it so much easier to edit these things. And as I go, I'm just making sure that all of the sections can be edited in Customizer. So yeah. Pretty, pretty awesome. This is what it said. Okay, I have the directory listing, source build, typical modern web development structure, blah, blah, blah. And then it looks at the structure, which is what Lovable built, and the target theme, which is what we're working on, uh, analysis, next step. So build versus theme structure. So it compares where we are with the theme that we're building in comparison to the, the, the template and plugin interaction, making sure it all coincides with the plugin. And that, that's very important. If you're not building a plugin with it, of course it doesn't matter, but why it matters is the taxonomy. So every, all the business pages, the business categories, all of those things, they need to be picked up and acknowledged by the theme. You, it, otherwise it would just do its own thing. It's, it would just, create its own things and then the content won't show up. So very important. And then it says to proceed effectively. It wants to know the main page views that were part. It wants to know, but I'm just gonna tell it to look at the files, which is the whole point. And then it wants to examine the template within the plugin to see what templates it provides. So again, these are things I'm gonna tell it to do to analyze the files before it writes any code and then We'll just go from there. And I probably need to get it to create a change log, which I thought it did the last time, but n n never mind. We'll just get it to do that. And I highly recommend creating and keeping a change log because just as I did with this, you could tag it in the call and then it will see what it's done and what it needs to do. Um, so yeah, that, that's pretty much it. You just have to take it step by step. There may be an easier way. So this has been working and this way I get to get very granular with the things I want to do. And of course, make sure that it interacts with the plugin and does everything I need it to do. So all the different elements all work together. Uh, otherwise it wouldn't really work. The plugin with another theme, you're going to have to do a lot of tweaking. And my whole thing is making sure it's as simple and as clean as possible. And then any updates once we've got the child theme any updates are just going to be seamless so that's it guys if you found this video useful interesting anything drop a comment drop a like subscribe it helps the channel and it helps me and my morale to keep creating videos so on the next one peace